Let's go over section 1.5. Question 1. One leg of a right triangle has a length of 7 meters. The other sides have lengths that are consecutive integers. Find these lengths. Well, let's draw a picture so we understand the problem. We're talking about a right triangle here. And we know one of the legs is 7 meters. Now the other sides have to be consecutive, so let's call this x. And since the hypotenuse is longer than the legs, this must be x plus 1 because it's consecutive. It's after this length. So now we can use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Or 7 squared plus x squared equals x plus 1 squared. Now we can square the 7, that's 49, plus x squared, and that's equal to x plus 1 squared is the same as x plus 1 times another x plus 1. And I could simplify this by foiling. This will give us x squared plus 2x plus 1. So please foil this on your own and make sure you get the same x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now I can try to solve for x. Let's subtract the x squared to both sides. And what do you know? These x squareds just cancel out. I could also subtract 1 to both sides. And now 48 is equal to 2x. Let's divide both sides by 2 x is equal to 24. Now this tells me that this leg here must be equal to 24 meters. This hypotenuse here, x plus 1, must be one more than that, so this is equal to 25 meters. So we have our solutions. The first leg is 24 meters, and the hypotenuse is 25 meters. Now some people might wonder, how do you check your work? Well, you can plug it into the Pythagorean theorem and see if it's true. Does 7 squared plus 24 squared equals 25 squared? It is true. So you can use a calculator to double check your work. And I know that we found the correct side lengths. Question 2. The length of each side of a square is 3 inches, more than the length of each side of a smaller square. The sum of the areas of the squares is 149 inches squared. Find the lengths of the sides of the two squares. Again, for this question, we'll have to draw some pictures. We know there's two squares involved. And we do not know the length of the smaller square. I don't know what it is, so let's give it a name. I'll call this x, x, x. And the lengths are the same all around because we're talking about a square. Now we do know that the larger square has the length of each side of the square is 3 inches more than the length of the smaller square. So this would be x plus 3 because it's 3 inches more on all sides. Now we do know the sum of the areas of the squares, so both of them together, is 149 square inches. Well, what's the area of the smaller square? The area of the smaller square is equal to x times x, or x squared. What's the area of the larger square? Well, that's going to be x plus 3 times x plus 3. Or x squared plus 6x plus 9. And that is from foiling. So now we can add these two up and we should get 149 square inches. So the area of the small square plus the area of the bigger square has to add up to 149. Let's collect like terms. We have x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. 
Now we can subtract 149 to both sides. This results in 2x squared plus 6x minus 140 equals 0. Now I can simplify this by dividing every term by 2. And this gives us x squared plus 3x minus 70 equals 0. Now again, I want to try to factor before I use anything else. Let's try to factor first. And the two numbers are 7 and 10. We'll know this is a negative 7. And since the leading coefficient is a 1, we'll use the diamond method. This is x minus 7 times x plus 10 equals to 0. And of course, you can set each of these factors equal to 0. So we have two possibilities. Either x minus 7 equals 0 or x plus 10 equals 0. Well, the first case implies x equals 7 and the second case implies x equals negative 10. Negative 10 does not make sense because you can't have a negative length. So we're going to go with x equals 7. Now what do we have to do with x equals 7? Well we know the original square has a side length of 7 all around. Now what's the side length of the bigger square? Well the bigger square is going to have a side length of 3 more than that on each side so it's going to be 10 so we know it's 10 inches on each side and the smaller square is 7 inches on each side question number 3 a rectangular piece of sheet metal is 10 inches longer than it is wide squares from sides 2 inches long are cut from four corners and the flaps are folded upward to form a open box if the volume of the box is 528 cubic inches what were the original dimensions of the sheet metal let's draw a picture of the problem we know that a piece of metal is 10 inches longer than it is y so let's call this distance here x and let's call this distance x plus 10 now we are going to cut out two inch squares from each of the corners. So let's cut out those corners. And each of these squares has a side length of two. Now when we fold up this rectangular box, what does it look like? Well, we know that this is going to be folded up and this will be the base of our box. Now what is this length here? Well, this length is going to be x minus 4. Now where did I get x minus 4? Well, the whole length is x. But we're subtracting 2 here and 2 here. That's why we have x minus 4 for the width of the box. Now what's the length of the box? Well the length of the box is going to be x plus 10 minus 4. How did I get x plus 10 minus 4? Because we're subtracting the 2 inches from each of those squares that we're going to take out and what's x plus 10 minus 4 well that's equivalent to x plus 6 so we have the base of the rectangular box is x plus 6 by x minus 4 now what's the height well if we're going to fold up this flap the height is going to be 2 the volume of a rectangular box is length times width times height we know the length is x plus 6. The width is x minus 4. And the height is going to be 2 inches. 
In the problem, they told us the volume is 528 cubic inches. So we'll replace V by 528. Now on the right side here, I should FOIL this out. This is going to give us x squared plus 2x minus 24 times 2. Now I FOILed this part out already, and we could distribute the 2. We have 525. We have 528 is equal to 2x squared plus 4x minus 48. And that's from distribution with the 2. Now let's set this equal to 0 so we can try to factor. Now I have 0 equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 576. We could divide everything by 2 now to simplify our equation. This simplifies to 0 equals x squared plus 2x minus 288. Now let's try to factor if possible. And the two numbers are 18 and 16. And this has to be a negative 16. So we can factor this as x plus 18 times x minus 16. Now that gives us two possibilities. x could be equal to negative 18, or x could be equal to positive 16. Well, x equals negative 16 does not work, so we're going to go with the x equals 16. Now what do we do with this number? We're going to plug it back in to our side lengths for our original piece of sheet metal and now we can find our solution one of the side lengths or the width is equivalent to 16 inches that's one answer the length is going to be 10 inches more than the width so we know that's going to be 26 inches and so the width is 16 inches and the length is 26 inches Question number four. The area of a rectangular wall of a barn is 110 square feet. Its length is 12 feet longer than twice its width. Find the length and width of the wall of the barn. I do not know what the width is, so let's give it a name. We'll call this X for this rectangular barn. Now we know the length is going to be 12 feet longer then twice its width. Since the width is x, we'll say twice that would be 2x, and 12 feet more would be plus 12. So we now have the length is 2 times the width plus 12 more. Now recall the area of a rectangle is length times width, so we can write x times 2x plus 12 is equal to the area which we know is 110 square feet. We can distribute. That's 2x squared plus 12x is equal to 110. Let's subtract 110 to both sides. We have 2x squared plus 12x minus 110 is equal to 0. Let's just simplify by dividing everything by 2 in our equation. I have x squared plus 6x minus 55 is equal to 0. And of course we could factor this as x plus 11 times x minus 5 equal to 0. And we have two possibilities. x could be equal to negative 11 or x could be positive 5. Let's throw out that negative 11. We can't have a negative length. So we'll go with x equals 5. Now we're going to plug this x equals 5 into our width and into our length. So we have the width is going to be 5 feet. Now what's the length? It's 2 times 5 plus 12. 2 times 5 plus 12, that gives me 22 feet. 
So the length is 22 feet and the width is 5 feet. Now how do I double check my work? Well if I multiply these two, 5 times 22, that should give us 110 and that's the area of the rectangular wall. Question 5. A projectile is launched from ground level with an initial velocity of v naught feet per second. The collecting air resistance, its height in feet t seconds after launch, is given by s equals negative 16 t squared plus v naught t. Find the times that the projectile will reach a height of 240 feet and b return to the ground when v naught equals 128 feet per second. Before we start the question, make sure we substitute what v naught is into our equation. We have s equals negative 16t squared plus 128t. Well, that's what we're going to use for this problem. We have to replace v naught or our initial velocity with 128 feet per second. In part A, I want to reach a height of 240 feet. That's going to be what we're replacing s with. 240 feet is equal to negative 16t squared plus 128t. Let's subtract 240 to both sides. 0 equals negative 16t squared plus 128t minus 240. Let's divide everything by negative 16 just to simplify our equation. And so this simplifies to 0 equals t squared minus 8t plus 15. Again, let's try to factor. Don't use the quadratic formula unless you have to. And the two numbers are negative 3 and negative 5. So this factors as t minus 3 times t minus 5. If I set both of these equal to 0 and solve for t, we have two solutions. t equals 3 or t equals 5. And now the units for this is in seconds. So if you think about the picture, we're throwing a projectile into the air. It's going to reach 240 feet at 3 seconds and it's going to reach that height at 5 seconds. Remember this is a parabolic shape. It goes up to 240, goes past 240, then it goes back down and reaches 240. So now we have two solutions, 3 seconds and 5 seconds. In part B, we want to know when this is going to reach ground level. So we're going to replace S with 0 because that's when it reaches the ground. 0 equals negative 16t squared plus 128t. I could simplify this by dividing everything by negative 16. And this gives me 0 equals t squared minus, minus 8t. Now let's factor this. We have 0 equals t times t minus 8. So we have two possible solutions t could be equal to 0 or t could be equal to 8. Now t equals to 0 is our starting position. We started on the ground and t equals 8 is right after the launch. So we're going to go with t equals 8 seconds. That's when it touches the ground. Question 6. Sales of SUVs in the United States in millions for the years 1990 through 1999 can be modeled by the quadratic equation shown below. Here, x equals 0 represents 1990, x equals 1 represents 1991, and so on. Use the model to estimate the sales in 1995. We know that 1995 corresponds to x equals 5. And that's what we're going to use to plug into this formula. In question 6, it's just a calculator question. We have y equals 0 0.016 times 5 squared plus 0 0.124 times 5 plus 0 0.787. So let's enter this into our calculators and we could solve for y. And this gives us 1.807 
So our solution is 1.8 million sales, approximately 1.8 million sales.